Hi everyone, today we are going to be looking at visual quadratic patterns. We are going to write the equation or the rule for the quadratic pattern first in factored form and then in standard form. Go ahead, grab a piece of paper and a pencil and let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at our pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and write down our position number. So position 1, position 2, and position 3. We have to look at each of the dimensions, so the length and the width. And we have to try to determine how does that dimension relate to the position number. So if I look at the bottom, the length, I can see that I have a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4 as I progress through the position numbers. So at position number 1, if there are two diamonds there, that means it's position number plus one. At position number two, we also have position number plus one because the position number is two and there are three diamonds, so two plus one is three. And same thing for position number three. So position number three is three, so there's uh, three diamonds plus one, so four diamonds in total, so position number plus one. So let's go ahead and write that as x or n, whatever variable you choose, plus one. Okay, if I go ahead and look at the other dimension, I can see that it is also position number plus one, so x plus one. So to write down the rule, I'm gonna write y is equal to x plus one times x plus one. And then I can use the distributive property to find the solution. Okay, so right now we have factored form of a quadratic and I'm going to use this little area model to help me put this into standard form. So x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x, x again, 1 times 1 is 1. Then remember to combine your like terms on the diagonal here, so x and x gives me 2x, so y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 is the standard form of this quadratic equation. To figure out the number of diamonds at step 43, we're simply going to replace the x with 43. And you can do that in either the factored form or the standard form. It doesn't matter. So y is equal to 1,936. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our next pattern. So again, I'm going to start by writing my position number. So position number 1, 2, and 3. And we already have our rectangle, so I just need to compare my dimensions to my position number. So if I look at the height, I have one helmet high in the first position, two helmets high in the second position, three helmets high in the third position. So that means the height is going to be x or n or whatever variable you're choosing to use. And then I have to look at the other dimension here. So I have three. So at first glance, I might think, well, it's position number plus two. But then when I move to the second position, position number plus two, well, that doesn't work because then I have this extra one over here. So it has to be consistent among all three positions. So position number plus two does not work here. So we have to go to the drawing board and see what other way can I compare the position number to the side length. So I could double the position number and add one. So one times two, well that's two plus one is three. Well there's three helmets. Two times two is four plus one. Well there's five helmets. Three times two plus one. Well there's seven helmets. So that works. So I'm going to write 2 times my position number, so 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. So that's the other dimension. So for the rule, y is equal to x times 2x plus 1. So next I can use an area model to distribute. So 2x squared, and in the other box, I would have just x. So y is equal to 2x squared plus x. 
So the first one is factored form, the second is standard form of the quadratic. And again, I can replace my x with 43 to figure out how many helmets would be at step 43. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next pattern. So here I notice that there are these two blocks on the ends of each of my rectangles. So those are actually constants. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and label my position one, two, and three, just like I did before. And then I'm going to look at my uh, dimensions here. So if I look at the height, it's the same as my position number. So X, 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 because there's one block, two blocks, and three blocks, which matches the position number. And then if I look at the other dimension going across from my rectangle, so I have three blocks. So I'm gonna see if position number plus two works for all of them. So position number plus two, position number plus two, position number plus two. Yes, it does work. So X plus two, X plus two, X plus two. So to write the rule, Y is equal to X, that's the height, and the length, or width, or whatever you want to call it, length and width, uh, plus two. And then we also have to add our constant, those two extra blocks at the end. And then again, we can use our area model to distribute. So x squared, 2x. So then y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2. And again, we can substitute step 43 by replacing every x with a 43 in either the factored or the standard form. Okay, let's look at our next example. For this next pattern, our hint is how can we turn this into a rectangle or a square? So I'm gonna see if I can take this extra block here and move it to the empty space. And I'm gonna do the same in the other steps as well. I'm gonna move those extra blocks to the empty space to make my square my rectangle. So in position number three, I've used the two end pieces, but in order to make this a rectangle, I also need to use these other two extra pieces here. Okay, so I have a two by two, three by three, four by four. So it looks like we're gonna have position number plus one again here. Okay, so for the rule, y is equal to x plus one times x plus one, or we could write this as x plus one squared. And using our area model, x squared, x, x, and one, combining the like terms, y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, one more example. Okay, so for this one, again, the hint is how can we turn this pattern into a rectangle or square? So I'd like you to pause the video and think about how we can turn this into a rectangle or a square. Go ahead and pause the video, please. Did you pause the video? Come on, get that brain going, pause the video. Okay, so in order to make this a rectangle or a square, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to double this pattern and turn it into a rectangle. So I'm basically filling in all of these empty gaps and then adding the extra row at the top to double the pattern. So position one, position two, and position three. So if I look at the bottom, it looks like position number plus one. And along the other dimension, we have position number plus two, position x plus two. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our rule. We need to make sure that we um, compensate for the fact that we've doubled the pattern. 
So after we figure out our rule, we actually have to divide it by two. So I'm going to go ahead and put a half, or in other words, we have to half the rule to get it back to the original. Okay, so I'm going to put a half in front, and then I'm going to write x plus 1, x plus 2 as the other dimension. I'm just going to leave the half out front for now, and I'm going to figure out the distributive, double distributive property here. So x plus 1, x plus 2, x squared, 2x, x, and 2, combining the terms in the middle. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 2. Simplifying, y is equal to 1 half x squared plus 3 halves x plus 1. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.